Hi, I'm Z Hussain, CTO of Aeros Communications, and today I'm here to talk to you about managing the life cycle of machine-to-machine -machine products. For that life cycle management, you need to take a number of things into account. Specifically, the most important part of it is during the design phase, what is the longevity of your product? You're going to be selling this for two to five potentially longer years. You have the devices out there that are deployed for five to ten years, and that has implications for the kinds of things you need to do to make sure your product is successful. For example, the decisions you need to make about the technology, the components you use in your product, and I'll talk a little bit more about this momentarily, but those are the things you have to take into account. In the process of designing, one of the most important things you will do for the technology is select the temperature range of your product. If it's an indoor product, you might pick a consumer range for the radio, for, from 0 to 70 degrees C typically. If it's an industrial product, you might go from negative 30 to plus 85. Your product might need to be outside and, and exposed to environmentals that are different from a typical consumer environment. Your component quality is important. You may have to worry, worry about vibration issues, picking the right product, and this has implications on your radio selection as well. You might need to seal your unit against uh, humidity and other environmental conditions. Uh, the part about the radio is, is as follows. There are multiple form factors available in radio. Two of the most popular form factors is the mini PCIe format and what's called the LGA or land grid array format. The mini PCIe format uses connectors and you might have issue with vibration with that. So you typically pick a LGA if you have issues with vibration because that is going to get soldered down to the baseboard of your design. That's one example of a technology issue that you need to make, decision you need to make when you're making your products uh, for sale. Another issue is the scaling. Your sales volume is going to dictate the kind of manufacturing capacity and production issues that you need to think about ahead of time. That's important. Will you make your products successful because you've automated the manufacturing of that particular product? That's very important. So, and another thing that's very important is to allow for host throughput scaling. The amount of data you receive from these devices will drive whether you pick a small system or large system or high availability systems. Maybe you need cloud services to be able to deploy the services over the entire United States or worldwide. Another issue associated with scaling is how rapidly can you get your devices provisioned. You have to automate. There's no doubt that high volume production is going to require you to use the APIs that we offer, such as the XML SOAP APIs or the next generation REST APIs. These are not issues for your programmers. They understand these protocols pretty well, and production programming is going to require you to interface using our APIs. You should do factory test. You make sure your device is operational before you send it out, because touching it after it's already out there is going to be expensive. Get it done before it goes out the factory. That means automate, do over-the-air transmissions, test your device. And, and do the right host throughput testings to make sure that you can, in fact, scale in that, uh, that way. During the device when, uh, operation, when it's out there in the, in the market, use our airport system. If you have a problem, you need to debug it. You need to figure out whether or not the network or the device is giving you an issue. And we can, tell, we can have tools that will tell you to f how to figure that out, whether it's your device or the network around the device that is having difficulty. Device management is important. You may need to do firmware over the air updates. That's very important in case you need to make changes to your device once it's out in the field. Because if you try to change the device by having to bring it back, that's a very expensive proposition. So when you swap a faulty unit, be prepared for those kinds of expenses. But if you can do firmware over the air for a large number of devices, you're better off. And that's very important, uh, very important to take into account for a machine-to-machine -machine application. Finally, the most important thing that I would emphasize, the one takeaway that I would highly recommend you think about when you're looking at this video here, is that end of life is important. You need to plan for the end of life of a device, whether it's an individual device that has gone bad or whether it's your application that needs to be swapped out because you're sending out a new, uh, new product into the field. This all has to be done at design time. You need to understand how to be able to plan for the update at design time. For example, you want to make sure to avoid touching the device because that's too expensive, error prone. And therefore, one of the things that you will need to think through is to have a process for sending a remote command to the device and disabling it rather than having to go out and touch it. Absolutely essential. Finally, end of life, reuse the numbers. You need to make it efficient to get those numbers back and reuse them for other product that you've either swapped or new products that are going out there. Summary, you have a design phase, scaling for growth phase, 
an operations phase and an end of life phase over the life cycle of your product. And again, I emphasize, reuse the numbers when you finish using a particular device or a particular set of numbers. If you have any more questions, please call us, go to our website. There's tons of information that you can get from it. Thank you.